السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو دا کورس آن ریسرچ میتھڈس وی کال دس کورس ایز ایڈوانس ریسرچ میتھڈس اس کورس کا بیسک فنکشن یہ ہے کہ ہم جو باتیں کریں گے اس کو ہم پریکٹیکلی لکھ کر بھی تھرو اسائنمنٹس ہم اس کو ڈیمونسٹریٹ کریں گے کہ ہمیں وہ چیزیں لرن کی ہیں اور لرن کر انڈرسٹینڈ کی ہیں اور لرن کی ہیں تو آپ یوں کہیے کہ ہم پورا ریسرچ پروسیس جو ہے اس میں سے گزریں گے لیکن ہم جتنی ریسرچ ٹیکنیکس ہیں ان کو ہم یہاں کور نہیں کریں گے ہمارا فوکس دو ٹیکنیکس پہ زیادہ ہوگا اور ان میں سے کوانٹیٹیو ریسرچ میں ہمارا فوکس سروے ریسرچ پر ہوگا اور کوالیٹیٹیو میں ہمارا فوکس جو ہے وہ کیس سٹڈی پر ہوگا تو اس کورس میں آپ ایسے کہہ لیجئے کہ آپ کو اپرچونیٹی ملے گی کہ ہم یہ ساری جو ہے پروسیس کو دیکھیں اور اس پروسیس میں آپ جب اسائنمنٹ ملے گی تو جو ہم نے یہاں ڈسکس کیا ہے اس کو آپ ان اسائنمنٹس میں ڈیمسٹریٹ کریں گے کہ آپ نے واقعی ان چیزوں کو انڈرسٹینڈ کیا ہے اور یہ ساتھ ساتھ اگر کام کریں گے تو پرابلی ہمارا کام سیدھا چلے گا اگر ساتھ ساتھ نہیں کریں گے تو پھر شاید اس میں گڑبڑ ہو جائے گی تو آئیڈیا از کہ آپ اپنی ریسرچ پرپوزل کو ڈیولپ کریں اب یہ ریسرچ پرپوزل کئی اعتبار سے ہم دیکھ سکتے ہیں کئی اینگل سے ہم اس کو دیکھ سکتے ہیں ایک ریسرچ پرپوزل ہے جو آپ ایز اے اسٹوڈنٹ سبمٹ کرتے ہیں فار رائٹنگ اے تھیسس دوسری ریسرچ پرپوزل ہو سکتی ہے کہ آپ ایک ریسرچر ہے یو مائٹ بی ڈیولپنگ ریسرچ پرپوزل فار ایویلویشن بائی دا کالگس اور تیسری کو ایسی بھی ہو سکتی ہے کہ یو مائٹ بی سبمٹنگ اے ریسرچ پرپوزل ٹو سم فنڈنگ ایجنسی جہاں سے آپ کوئی فنڈز لینا چاہتے ہیں اپنی ریسرچ کے لیے اینڈ آبویسلی جہاں سے فنڈ لیتے ہیں وہاں آپ اکیلے نہیں ہیں آپ کمپیٹ کر رہے ہیں اور بھی بہت سارے جو ہیں کمپیٹیٹرس اور ہماری اگر ریسرچ پرپوزل جو ہے سبسٹینٹیولی اینڈ میتھڈولوجیکلی اگر ان سے بہتر ہوئی تب ہی ہم وہاں سے پیسے لے سکتے ہیں سو دس از دا بیسک آئیڈیا کہ ہم ایک ریسرچ پرپوزل ڈیولپ کریں اور جب ریسرچ پرپوزل ہم ڈیولپ کرتے ہیں تو اس میں ہم الف سے لے کر یہ تک وہ ساری چیزیں بتاتے ہیں کہ ہم ہمارا ٹاپک کیا ہے اس ٹاپک کا آبجیکٹوز کیا ہیں اس کی اگر کوئی کوشچنز ہیں تو ان کی ہم بات کرتے ہیں ہائپوتھس ہے تو اس کی بات کرتے ہیں اینڈ دین اس کی سگنیفیکنس ہے اینڈ دین وی آلسو ٹاک اباؤٹ لیٹ سے بیسیکلی یا پرائمیرلی جو ہمارا فوکس ہوتا ہے آن ریسرچ ڈیزائن ہے کہ ریسرچ ڈیزائن ہمارا کتنا اسٹرانگ ہے اور اس ریسرچ ڈیزائن میں ہم اس کورس میں جو فوکس کریں گے وہ زیادہ جو ہے سروے ریسرچ پہ کریں گے یا پھر ہم کریں گے کیس اسٹڈی پہ اور کسی سچویشن میں یہ ڈپینڈ کرتا ہے اگین ریسرچر کی اپنی اپروچ پر ہم دونوں کو کمبائن بھی کر سکتے ہیں جس میں آپ کہہ سکتے ہیں کہ مکس میتھڈالوجی کی آپ بات کر سکتے ہیں تو بیسک آئیڈیا اس کورس کا یہ ہے کہ ہم اپنے اسٹوڈنٹس کو پریپیئر کریں اس طریقے سے کہ وہ ایک اچھی ریسرچ پرپوزل ڈیولپ کر سکیں اور وہ ریسرچ پرپوزل اگر تھیسس کے لیے ہے تو ان کے سپروائزر یا ان کی سپروائزری کمیٹی جو ہے اس کو ایویلویٹ کریں اور ایویلویشن کے بعد آئیڈیا از کہ دیٹ از ایکسیپٹیڈ اور ایکسیپٹیڈ اگر ہے ایکسیپٹ ہو جاتی ہے تو پھر ہم کہتے ہیں کہ اچھا جی گو ہیڈ اینڈ دین سپروائز قسم کی وہ ریسرچ ہوگی دوسری جو ریسرچ تھی اس میں سپروویژن نہیں ہے اس میں ریسرچر جو ہے انڈیپینڈنٹلی کام کرتا ہے اینڈ وی اسیوم دیٹ دا ریسرچر از اے کمپیٹنٹ پرسن کیپیبل پرسن ہی کین ڈو ریسرچ اس کو سپروویژن کی ضرورت اس طرح سے نہیں ہے جس طرح کہ آپ کو ایک یونیورسٹی میں تھیسس لکھتے ہیں تو یو ہیو یور سپروائزر اور سپروائزری کمیٹی جس میں ایک سے زیادہ لوگ ہیں جن کے ساتھ جن سے آپ گائیڈنس لے سکتے ہیں اس میں بہت ساری کتابیں ہم نے ریکمینڈ کی ہیں اگرچہ ہم کہتے ہیں کہ کوئی ایک کتاب جو ہے دیر از نو کیچ آل بک ہمیں کہتے ہیں کہ کچھ 
کسی ایک کتاب میں زیادہ ٹاپک جو ہے اچھے طریقے سے ڈیل کیا گیا ہے کچھ دوسری میں کیا گیا ہے تو آپ کو بہت ساری کتابیں میں نے یہاں سجسٹ کی ہیں لیکن یہ نہ سمجھئے کہ یہ کتابیں جو ہیں آخری لفظ ہیں آپ کو اس کے علاوہ بھی اگر کہیں سے اچھا کوئی مٹیریل ملتا ہے تو در اس نو ہام ایم ناٹ سینگ کہ یہ کتابیں ہی کچھ سیکرٹ کتابیں ہیں جن کے علاوہ ہم کہیں اور سے نہیں دیکھ سکتے سلیکشن آف ٹاپک کی ہم بات کرتے ہیں ٹاپک آف جو ریسرچ ہے یہ ہم اوپن دیتے ہیں پرٹیکلرلی اپنے سٹوڈنٹس کو ان کا اپنا انٹرسٹ ہے اوبیسلی سب سے پہلا تو چونکہ انہوں نے کسی ایک کورس میں ریجسٹر کیا ہوا ہے اس کا ٹاپک جو ہے اس کورس کے حوالے سے اسی فیل میں ہوگا لیکن اس کے باوجود ہم یہی کہہ رہے ہیں کہ آپ کو سٹوڈنٹ ہمارے کو فریڈم ہے کہ ہی کوڈ چوز اینی ٹاپک آف ریسرچ انلیس کہ وہ کسی ٹیچر خاص ٹیچر کے ساتھ کام کر رہا ہے اور اس ٹیچر کا کوئی سپیشل انٹریسٹ ہے ان دا براڈ ایریا آف دیٹ سبجیکٹ تو وہ پھر ہو سکتا ہے کہ اس کو نیرو وہیں سے ہو جائے لیکن سٹوڈنٹ کے لیے ہم یہی کہہ رہے ہیں کہ اٹ از اے فریڈم فار دا پرسن ٹو چوز اے ٹاپک آف ہز اور ہر اون انٹرسٹ ان دا فیلڈ آف سبجیکٹ ان وچ دا پرسن از ٹرائنگ ٹو اسپیشلائز اس سلیکشن کے لیے ہم یہ کہتے ہیں کہ کوئی فارمولا نہیں ہے جو کہ ہم آپ کو فارمولا دے دیں اور آپ اس کو اپلائی کر کے یو کڈ چوز ون ون ٹاپک البتہ اگر آپ کہیں بڈنگ کر رہے ہیں کسی فنڈنگ ایجنسی کو پرپوزل دے رہے ہیں تو وہاں پر آپ کو یہ مسئلہ نہیں ہے کہ آپ نے ٹاپک چوز کرنا ہے ٹاپک انہوں نے آپ کو دیا ہوگا ٹرمز آف ریفرنس میں وہ اپنا ٹاپک دیتے ہیں بٹ سرٹنلی جب آپ آپ کو ہم یہ فریڈم دے رہے ہیں کہ ٹاپک آپ نے خود چننا ہے تو اس کے حوالے سے یہ ٹاپک آپ کو کہاں سے ملے گا کہیں دکان سے نہیں ملتا کہ ہم کہیں وہاں سے خرید لو یہ ٹاپک جو ہے ان فیکٹ آپ کا انٹرسٹ ہے کہ آپ کا کیا انٹرسٹ ہے اس انٹرسٹ کو سامنے رکھ کر آپ اپنے ٹاپک کو چوز کرتے ہیں البتہ اس انٹرسٹ کے حوالے سے اور بہت ساری باتیں ہو سکتی ہیں کہ آپ کا کوئی خاص ایکسپیرینس ہے اپنے ہی فیلڈ میں اس ایکسپیرینس کو سامنے رکھ کرنا یو وانٹ ٹو پروسیڈ فردر اور اس کے اوپر آپ ریسرچ کرنا چاہتے ہیں آپ کا یہ ٹاپک جو ہے کہیں ماس میڈیا سے بھی آپ لے سکتے ہیں یہ ٹاپک آپ کہیں ریویو آف لٹریچر کر رہے ہیں یا کوئی آرٹیکل پڑھ رہے ہیں یہ ٹاپک وہاں سے بھی مل سکتا ہے یہ ٹاپک ایسا بھی ہو سکتا ہے کہ لیٹا سے کہیں سوسائٹی میں کوئی ایشو ہے کوئی انڈیزائرایبل سچویشن ہے جس کو ہم کہتے ہیں سوشل پرابلم ہے اس پرابلم کو حل کرنے کے لیے بھی آپ ٹاپک اپنا ریسرچ کا بنا سکتے ہیں کہ آپ کہتے ہیں کہ اوکے دس از دا ایشو ان دا سوسائٹی ناؤ یو وانٹ ٹو سی ہاؤ کڈ وی اوور کم دیٹ انڈیزائرایبل کائنڈ آف سچویشن سو دیٹ از ہاؤ وی ٹرائی ٹو لک ان ٹو دی سلیکشن آف ٹاپک ورنہ یہ بھی ہو سکتا ہے کہ کوئی بہت ہاٹ ایشو ہے ان دا سوسائٹی وہاں سے بھی آپ کو کوئی کلو مل سکتی ہے یا انکوزیٹیو بات ہو سکتی ہے کہ آپ کہیں کہ اوکے دس دیز آر سم آف دی ویریبلس آئی تھنک جن کے اوپر ہم اگر بات کریں یا ان کی ہم اسٹڈی کریں ان کے ریزنس پہ جائیں تو دین پرہیپس یو تھنک کہ ہم اس کو اس ایشو کو سالو کر سکتے ہیں اس ایشو کو کسی نہ کسی طریقے سے ہینڈل کر سکتے ہیں تو دیٹ از ہاؤ وی لک ان ٹو دیز کائنڈ آف تھنگس یہاں سے اگر آپ پروسیڈ کریں فردر تو ہم یہ کہتے ہیں کہ اسٹارٹ فرام اے براڈ ایریا آف انٹرسٹ براڈ ایریا آف انٹرسٹ جو ہے کسے کہتے ہیں وہ آپ نے آلریڈی ڈسائڈ کیا ہوا ہے کہ آپ کسی سبجیکٹ میں انرولڈ ہیں وہ سبجیکٹ ہی آپ کا براڈ ایریا آف انٹرسٹ ہے اور اس کے حوالے سے آپ کسی چھوٹی جو ہے نیرو ڈاؤن کر رہے ہیں کہ اس میں سے کوئی ایک آسپیکٹ لی ہے اور اس آسپیکٹ کو آپ کرنا چاہتے ہیں کہ اس کے اوپر فوکس کریں کیونکہ ایشو بہت بڑا ہو سکتا ہے 
or uh, don't think it, you can solve the bigger issue by, uh, let's say, digging into the reasons uh, or uh, perceptions of the people. Unko dekar, ye don't, ye nahi samjhiye ki aap pure ke pure issue ko handle kar sakte hain. Kar sakte ho, that is fine. Main ye nahi kahunga ki aap bilkul hi nahi kar sakte, but main jo aapko mashwara ye dunga. कि आप वो काम कीजिए टॉपिक उतना लीजिए जो अपने रिसोर्सेस अपने टाइम को सामने रखते हुए आप उसको हैंडल कर सके तो आइडिया इज के सेलेक्ट अ टॉपिक व्हिच इज मैनेजेबल व्हिच यू कैन हैंडल इट एंड आई वुड सिंपली कॉल इट एज डूएबल और जिसको आप मैनेज कर सके और आल्सो वंस यू फिनिश योर लेट्स से वर्क यू राइट द रिपोर्ट You might see कि अच्छा यार के मैंने इस पे काम शुरू किया था और ये काम जो है इसको मैंने इस तरीके से हैंडल किया and there is there are objectives in this uh, let us say uh, research proposal you may have spelled out those objectives ये हम बाद में बात करेंगे तो आखिर में आकर कम से कम आप ये कह सकें कि अच्छा जी ये objectives जो हैं वो आपने achieve किए हैं तो इस में मैं आपसे ये कहूँगा कि आप आइडेंटिफाई करें सर्टन वेरिएबल्स जिनके ऊपर आप फोकस करना चाहते हैं आप उसके लिए ब्रेन कर सकते हैं और लोगों से बात कर सकते हैं आप उसके लिए सबसे बड़ा जो आपके पास रिसोर्स है जिससे आपको हेल्प मिलती है वो लोगों का काम किया है लोगों के काम को पढ़ेंगे लोगों की रिसर्च को पढ़ेंगे जिसको हम रिव्यू ऑफ लिटरेचर कहते हैं तो आपको वहां से भी इस बात का आइडिया मिल सकता है इसके लिए देखिए मैं आपको वेरिएबल्स की एक बहुत लंबी लिस्ट दे सकता हूं उनमें से लेट से लेट मी रीड इट मैं इनको पढ़कर आपको बताता हूं कि उन वेरिएबल्स में पावर रिलेशन हो सकते हैं ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल सिटीजनशिप बिहेवियर हो सकती है मोटिवेशन का वेरिएबल हो सकता है कस्टमर सेटिस्फेक्शन का वेरिएबल हो सकता है कस्टमर लॉयल्टी की बात हो सकती है अग्रेसिव बिहेवियर की बात हो सकती है मॉडर्निज्म एक वेरिएबल है रिलीजोसिटी हो सकती है लीडरशिप का वेरिएबल है विमेन एम्पावरमेंट का वेरिएबल है विमेन हेरासमेंट का वेरिएबल है सेल्फ कॉन्सेप्ट की आप बात कर सकते हैं जॉब एनरिचमेंट की बात हो सकती है इमोशनल इंटेलिजेंस का एक एरिया है या आस्पेक्ट है या एक वेरिएबल है इमोशनल लेबर का एक कॉन्सेप्ट है शायद आपने पहले सुना हो कहीं या नहीं आई थिंक दिस इज इम्पॉर्टेंट काइंड ऑफ कॉन्सेप्ट ऑक्यूपेशनल एस्पिरेशन हो सकती हैं कॉन्फ्लिक्ट मैनेजमेंट हो सकता है स्ट्रेस एंड स्ट्रेस का एरिया हो सकता है ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल कमिटमेंट की बात है कॉरपोरेट सोशल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी की बात है मार्केटिंग सोशल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी की बात है कॉरपोरेट वॉल्टरिज्म की बात है सुपरमार्केट लॉयल्टी स्कीम्स एंड कस्टमर रिलेशन रिटेंशन की बात हो सकती है मोबाइल हैंड हेल्थ डिवाइसेस की बात हो सकती है वर्क लाइफ बैलेंस की बात हो सकती है पर्टिकुलरली वन वी आर टॉकिंग इन द एरिया ऑफ लेट से जेंडर स्टडीज एंड लॉर्ड्स ऑफ वुमेन आर इन द इन द लेबर मार्केट and how these uh, individuals these women uh, make uh, an adjustment between the demands at the, at the place of their work and the demands of their families so work life uh, um, adjustment ki baat hai ya management ki baat hai how do they look into these kind of things aapko guide kiya ja sakta hai ki bhai is kism ke variables ho sakte hain तो आपको देखना यह है कि हाउ डू यू मैनेज ऑल दीज थिंग्स आपका बड़ा रिसोर्स जैसे मैंने कहा कि रिव्यू ऑफ लिटरेचर है अब रिव्यू ऑफ लिटरेचर में ट्राई टू लुक इन टू डिफरेंट हेडिंग्स लेट्स से टॉपिक्स विच पीपल हैव यूज टाइटल्स ऑफ द पेपर्स हैं टाइटल्स ऑफ द बुक्स हैं आप उसमें से देखिए कि कौन से टॉपिक्स हैं जो आपको लेट्स से अपील कर सकते हैं ये भी हो सकता है कि कुछ रिसर्च किसी और मुल्क में हुई हो आप चाहते हैं कि उसी किस्म की रिसर्च को अपने मुल्क में करके देखें रिपीट हो सकती है एंड देन 
since the environment are different in our place and let's say in the developed countries you might make a comparison between uh, these kind of things you can also see that some work which has been done in a particular field aap usko dusre field mein apply bhi kar sakte hain misal ke taur par ek research hai let's say commitment ki baat kar rahe hain ya job satisfaction ki baat kar rahe hain so somebody has done lot of research and that lot of researchers have gone into it that's in the area of uh, industrial uh, organizations or business organizations you may like to say rather than doing into in these kind of organization you might be trying to find out something in the service organization a service organization could be hospital service organization could be a bank service organization can also be i would say a university to dusre field mein jo kaam hua hai ya wahan par koi theory develop hui hai you might pick up that theory and see how you could apply to uh in another kind of uh, let's say setting or uh, this is uh, how we try to move on from uh, just a clue just an idea and uh, that idea emerges from your own interest and when you uh, try to uh, let's say focus on specific kind of literature uh, these two can help you in uh, crystallizing uh your idea into uh specific variables or into some kind of questions to uske hisab se aap baat kar sakte hain so jo main aap se baat ki wo ye hai ke a broad area se lekar now try to narrow it down in such a way that you can really focus on something and uh, manage it within the time constraints within the resources uh, available to you so from the broad area now you might be coming up to some kind of uh, let's say main question could be one question or there could be number of questions to which you want to find an answer and that question might uh, help you to move in certain direction and you are trying to find a specific answer to that particular question and if you have a question and mind it if you have a question that actually uh, pinpoints that where you want to go and if we know where do we want to go hame pata hai ki kahan pahunchna hai kahan jana hai to wahan jaane ke liye wahan pahunchne ke liye hum kisi se bhi rasta puch lenge wo batane wala aapka advisor bhi ho sakta hai वो कोई और एक्सपर्ट भी हो सकता है लेकिन अगर हमें ये नहीं पता कि हमने पहुंचना कहाँ है हमारी मंजिल क्या है हमने अचीव क्या करना है तो फिर हम किसी से क्या पूछेंगे फिर तो हम ये नहीं पूछ सकते कि वहां पहुंचने के लिए कौन सी सड़क जाती है मे भी आप कोई भी सड़क से जा सकते हैं ना ये जो क्वेश्चन की बात मैंने की है ये रिसर्च क्वेश्चन की बात कर रहा हूँ मैं वो उन क्वेश्चन की बात नहीं कर रहा जो कि हम एक क्वेश्चन डेवलप करके एक इंस्ट्रूमेंट डेवलप करके हम फील्ड में जाकर लोगों से इंफॉर्मेशन कलेक्ट करते हैं तो दिस इज ए रिसर्च काइंड ऑफ क्वेश्चन इसी क्वेश्चन के जब आप जवाब ढूंढते हैं और इन क्वेश्चन के साथ क्वेश्चन में एक वेरिएबल है ओके व्हाई इज देयर लेटर से फंडामेंटलिज्म और व्हाई इज देयर टेररिज्म इन द कंट्री दैट्स ए बिग क्वेश्चन दिस ए वेरी ब्रॉड क्वेश्चन and if we have some answer to these questions that could be one variable if we have an answer to that question which will give us clue to some other variables then we can connect these variables you can move from question to some kind of proposition and and aapko pata hai ke wo proposition jisko hum test kar sake wo hamari hypothesis ban sakti hai so क्वेश्चन बना सकते हैं क्वेश्चन के साथ आप हाइपोथेसिस भी डेवलप कर सकते हैं एंड दैट इज वी सी के आई एम ट्राइंग टू फाइंड आउट समथिंग व्हाट इज एक्स एंड देन प्रॉब्ली इफ यू हैव थ्योरेटिकल काइंड ऑफ आंसर टू दैट क्वेश्चन पहली चीज है कि मे बी वी आर ट्राइंग टू फाइंड आउट व्हाट 
एग्जैक्टली इज द सिचुएशन हम देख रहे हैं कि हमारा जो वेरिएबल है उसकी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन क्या है उसमें वट वेन वेयर हाउ ऑल दीज थिंग्स आर टू बी लुक एट बट देन यू ट्राई टू मूव ऑन फ्रॉम देयर पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन टू द ब्रॉड टॉपिक एंड देयर मे बी फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू माइट बी लुकिंग इन टू दर से ब्रॉड एरिया कुड बी जेंडर स्टडीज एंड फ्रॉम द ब्रॉड एरिया यू आर नो नैरोंग इट डाउन to let's say women harassment in the work organizations and there you might move from uh, let's say broad area gender studies se aap niche aa gaye ya aage chal pade ki acha ji humne dekh rahe hain ki women harassment ki agar baat kar rahe hain to ye kahan par hai aur let us say yahan par bhi उन औरतों की या दोज वन हुर और हु हैव एक्सपीरियंस दैट काइंड ऑफ सिचुएशन वट काइंड ऑफ प्रोफाइल इज ऑफ दोज वन अब इस प्रोफाइल में भी बात वही आ रही है कि हाउ मैनी वन वट इज वट इज देयर लेट से वट आर देयर कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स सो दैट इज हाउ वी लुक इन टू दैट सो प्रोफाइल के बाद फिर आप यू कैन लुक इन टू the factors which might be contributing to that kind of uh, harassment or you can also move on to the consequences of these kind of uh, harassment so as you know ke koi variable in itself jo hai wo independent nahi hai aur dependent nahi hai ye researcher hai uska kaam hai ki us variable ko as independent le ya usko as dependent if you are looking into the factors contributing to that kind of situation then in that situation women harassment will become a dependent variable and if you are looking into the consequences of that harassment then uh, women's uh, variable women uh, harassment could become uh, an independent kind of variable but certainly when you are trying to uh, say that kind of situation Uh, we say uh, that th- these are the consequences or these are the let's say factors contributing it we uh, have to look into the rationale what is the logic what could be the theoretical explanation for whatever we are trying to propose like relationship between one factor and another factor and then you could also see what could be the rationale for this particular uh, kind of situation so hum questions ki baat kar rahe hain ke questions uh, jo hum pose karte hain uske piche koi na koi rationale hai aur uh, hum har question ke upar dekhte hain ke what could be the possible reasons for uh, this particular situation and these rationale could be uh, providing us some kind of clue either to the factors which are producing that kind of situation or maybe those consequences which could be the result of that particular situation so that's a that's a real problem of uh, uh, of the society and uh, practical kind of problem and from this practical problem actually we move on to research problem when we are looking at that problem and we are trying to pose these questions and in these questions we see that uh, perhaps there is no answer uh, immediate answer to these uh, kind of questions one or there could be some theoretical kind of uh, possibility possible answers but we are not very sure whether when we go to the field practically actually these are the realities or uh, what we have looked into the literature or theoretically what could be the possibility there may not be let's say a congruence between what we found theoretically and what is uh, there in 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 reality so if we are not finding that kind of thing that means there is a gap let's say in knowledge uh, or we have something in mind we want to find out uh, 
to what extent it is actually uh, prevailing in the real situation. So that uh, uh, creates a, a situation where uh, you and I as researchers go to the field and try to collect the information and create knowledge so that uh, that knowledge could be used for the overcoming of that particular uh, uh, practical situation in the or practical problem in the society. So that is uh, where we move from, let's say, uh, a social problem or problem of the society and convert it into a research problem. So, so therefore, uh, I think you remember we discussed earlier uh, that uh, every social problem may not be a research problem and every research problem may not be a social problem. And uh, as a researcher, we can pick up these uh, uh, practical problems and do research on them. And of course, you know that the research could also be done just uh, uh, for the curiosity of an individual, uh, just for the creation of the knowledge, uh, just in the area of pure research or fundamental kind of research or what we call as basic research. But certainly, if we are focusing on a practical problem in the society and we are having the issues we are looking for solutions, and the solutions immediately are not available. We are looking into the literature, which has uh, been a, um, a creation of uh, uh, situations or creation of st by studying other situations in other countries as well. So from there, we are trying to uh, postulate or theorize that this could also be in uh, Pakistani society where we are focusing on a real social problem or economic problem of the society. So in order to fill that gap, the researcher comes in and tries to collect the information. And that is how we might be converting uh, or moving away, moving from the real social or economic or political problem of the society to moving to a research problem where we would like to generate something. So research problem involves what we don't know. That's the non-availability of answers to the research questions. And therefore, we would like to learn about uh, the situation in the society. We would like to create knowledge. And that is where I think researcher comes in, and that's where our hypothesis comes in. That's where we might be generating a number of questions, and we want to find answer to those questions. Solving research problem as such does not solve the practical problem. We have a question. We, as a researcher, we find an answer to that question. So in a way, the puzzle which we have created, we may be able to solve that puzzle by going to the field, collecting the information, and we find an answer to that particular situation. But that does not in itself mean that the society's problems has been solved. It is the researcher's problem which has been solved. So researcher's problem has been taken care of by the researcher. He has gone to the field. He has collected the data, maybe tested the hypothesis, tested the theory, and come up with some kind of conclusion. Now, that research as such does not solve the problem of the society. The problem of the society will be solved only when the findings of this research are utilized by, let's say, the action, uh, the people who want to take action, people who want to actually solve that problem. Researcher can also be part of that. Uh, maybe this is more like an action kind of research where the research findings are fed back into the situation and uh, some approach is being followed whereby the problem of the society could be solved, could be taken care of. Now, when we are talking about the creation of knowledge, 
as I said, that our researcher is going to create knowledge by doing this research. Now, there are different kind of, uh, let's say, opinions about this uh, knowledge, that how this knowledge has been created. Is this knowledge which has been created by this particular researcher, is it acceptable? Will it be made part of the existing body of knowledge? And when we talk in these kind of, uh, I think, uh, environment, this kind of uh, approach or a situation, we move to the area of epistemology. Now, epistemology actually want to find out that how this knowledge was created. Now, can we accept this knowledge? And uh, then they try to look at that knowledge in different frameworks. Acceptability based on grounds and nature of the knowledge itself. Now, that kind of thing, when we say acceptability of the knowledge based on the nature of the knowledge, that is actually the broad meaning of uh, epistemology. Now, how do people accept it? They try to uh, follow certain ap approaches. Traditionally, the natural sciences approach has been followed, and anything which we generate, which we create, if we follow that kind of approach, maybe that is acceptable. But I think then later on, people have tried to challenge that uh, approach by looking into the situation that can that approach which was called a scientific kind of approach in the natural sciences, can it be applied to the, so, the, the, the social sciences? Because uh, uh, I think the big uh, difference could be that in the social sciences we are talking about the human beings, whereas uh, in the natural sciences, uh, the subjects on which the research is conducted may not be the human beings, may be the non-humans uh, kind of things. And certain things which could be applicable uh, to the non-humans may not be applicable to the uh, human behavior. And here I think the big criticism is on the positivistic kind of uh, approach. Positivism is actually the scientific strategy to study the phenomenon based on five principles. As I said, uh, natural sciences uh, have been following a positivistic approach. And when in the beginning, social sciences tried to follow the same approach, I think they tried to uh, copy uh, the same kind of procedures for conducting research. I think one important principle of uh, the positivistic approach is that they are looking at the sensory kind of experiences. That all data uh, which we collect have to be collected by using these sensory experiences. That is, the human beings have the five senses and uh, the data has to be collected by using one sense or more than one sense. Uh, when we talk about that, there I think important point is that the reality or the phenomenon which we are trying to study, that has to be observable. Now, phenomena is observable. That's, uh, I think that has been a uh, reality in the natural sciences. When we talk about the social sciences, uh, there are lots of uh, phenomena, lots of realities which may not be observable. Well, human beings are there. Uh, definitely they are observable. We can count them. We can also, uh, just by looking at them, we could look into their complexion, the color. We can divide people into different races. We can divide people into different, let's say, uh, male and female genders. But then there are many things which perhaps we cannot see. Uh, what's going on in the mind of a person, uh, perhaps that we cannot see. Uh, although the, the positivists have been uh, studying the human behavior, the reality is related with human behavior, but then they were talking that we are observing this very phenomenon by indirect means. Indirect means could be by, let us say, talking with the person, asking questions, and from those questions, uh, we try to 
uh, make certain inferences, make the interpretations of the answers being given by, by, the, by the respondents whom we try to study. The second, I think, important uh, issue in the positivism is, or second important basis of the positivistic approach is, that it tries to use theory as a basis for uh, moving into the field. So the basic idea is that they are following in deductive kind of approach. So we try to uh, use a theoretical kind of uh, model. We either borrow a model which has already been developed by others or we develop our own theoretical framework. And from that theoretical framework, we try to build up the logic, a logical argument for the for, uh, let's say, telling that there is an association between two factors or three factors between X and Y. Now, that's an approach which is usually referred to as from uh, deductive approach as moving from general situation to a specific kind of situation. So that's the, uh, I think, main approach. But that doesn't mean that the positivists don't use the inductive approach where people look into the individual kind of situations and they observe those kind of situations, observe the behavior, uh, number of people, and from there, they may like to make a generalization. So inductive approach is there, but uh, I think the major, I think, thrust of the positivists has been uh, more of a deductive kind of approach. This. Uh, Inductive approach is uh, more, uh, I think, uh, in the area of uh, qualitative kind of researchers. And by the way, uh, the positivistics are also considered as uh, uh, people who are uh, collecting data in a quantitative kind of form. Uh, quantitative kind of researchers, uh, if we have that label, you know, that is more associated with the positivist. Uh, the qualitative uh, researchers are uh, more in the area of uh, working in the area of uh, that approach which is considered as an inductive kind of approach. They collect the data and from there they try to generate the theories. They call it as, a, let's say, ground, uh, grounded, kind of, uh, grounded kind of theories. Okay. Now these theories, uh, okay, are there, but then they, these theories also become part of the body of knowledge. But that doesn't mean that we are not using those theories. The researchers try to make sure use those very theories as well. So in fact, uh, the 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 latest uh, approach is where probably it becomes difficult to really divide this quantitative and qualitative into watertight type of compartments. They try to mix up these things uh, uh, even as I see and maybe we we'll discuss sometimes later uh, in qualitative researches uh, there are certain uh, let's say schools of thought or some, some uh, special researchers who would like to go for theoretical framework as well. Fourth point is the scientific strategy has to be value free. Now, value free when we say that the researcher should be detached from, uh, let's say, subjects. He's trying to do research by uh, not bringing into his uh, personal likings and dislikings, personal. Uh, uh, religious feelings, uh, personal, cultural kind of values. So the values should not be uh, part of uh, this particular research. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying that the values cannot be studied. Values per se have been uh, the focus of study of the positivists uh, as well. But uh, when we talk about value-free means uh, that the research should be conducted in a very unbiased kind of manner, that the values of the researcher should not contaminate the information. If we bring in the values of the uh, researcher, then perhaps uh, 
the, the purity of the data uh, may be undermined. Therefore, uh, the one very important hallmark of this uh, uh, scientific approach or the positivistic approach is that we have to go for objectivity and objectivity implies that uh, we try to do research in a very dispassionate kind of manner. So persons, uh, personal feelings, uh, associations should be kept aside and should come up with whatever is the reality. And if the reality does not go along with the personal likings and dislikings, okay, that's fine. He should come up with the um, with the truth. The one of I, I think one of the goals of the scientific scientific approach is to reach the truth, and uh, they are uh, I think very particular in this in this sense that uh, truth should be truth. It should not be. It should be. We will be able to come to the truth only when we keep our personal likings and dislikings uh, aside, and we do the research in a very unbiased kind of manner. The fifth point is that the scientific findings can be verified. I think that's that's another uh, kind of uh, characteristic of uh, the positivists, that uh, they are talking about uh, the verification of the knowledge. That, uh, okay, if we have uh, observed uh, once at a particular situation or a study has been carried out once, these are the findings, okay? These have to be verified. We have to come up with something which is a, a true kind of knowledge. So it's, one, it has to be observable. The reality has to be, ha, is to be observable. Observable with the help of the five senses. If one could observe, if one researcher could observe, well, can it be repeated by others? Uh, the, uh, the findings of one researcher could be challenged by others and uh, they can uh, challenge those and come up uh, with the, uh, let's say, repeated kind of uh, uh, findings only if the verification is possible. And I think that's very important and this is one of the reasons that the positivists try to lay down a clear-cut kind of uh, methodology the procedure which they have followed and anybody who would like to let's say, verify that could follow the same procedure and likely to come up with the same findings. And if he doesn't come up with the same findings, then perhaps there is something wrong, either the methodology of the first researcher or the second researcher. I think these are the five points which the positivists try to follow. They are focusing on sensory kind of experiences. They are looking into the deductive kind of approach. They also try to use inductive kind of approach. Then they talk about the uh, object, objective kind of approach, uh, where it should be value free. And uh, then perhaps at the end, they are talking about the verification of the findings of one person. I think this is, uh, this, the, the, these were the uh, characteristics of the scientific approach. Now, criticism is that can we really apply all these five principles when we are trying to study the human behavior? So there could be difficulties as, as well. Uh, simp when we talk about the verification, in many cases, uh, uh, people have an argument that human, it's very difficult to uh, repeat the uh, human behavior. Second time, maybe the, that very individual does not um, behave exactly the same way. Therefore, there are limitations. So this is a, a one uh, approach. And uh, I think the positivists uh, have this kind of faith in it. And they say, if the knowledge is generated, the epistemology of knowledge, if the nature of knowledge is such that it has been created by following this approach, then perhaps it's worth uh, including in the existing body of knowledge. Otherwise, uh, maybe they have to treat it in a different way. But certainly, 
there is a, another school of thought which may not be following this approach, but they are little different. Let me further uh, add on to it with respect to the positivists. Their focus is that the reality is out there. They would like to have a detached kind of uh, uh, relationship with that reality. So reality is out there. They can identify it. They can see it. They can observe it. They can use the five senses for its observ observation. And for the, the difficulty uh, is that when we are looking at that reality, uh, how do they look at that? Now, that is decided by the researcher. What aspects to be looked at, these are, this is all decided by the researcher. The components of that reality which he wants to find out, that is all decided uh, by the So it is more like the reality has been uh, created by the researcher, and by using the criteria of the researcher, he or she tries to go and see and study that particular reality. I think that's uh, one important uh, point of these uh, uh, positivists, and that's where uh, the other school of thought criticizes them, that who, are, who is this researcher who's trying to uh, create that reality or study that reality by using its own criterion. The reality is out there, that's of the people. The family is there, that's of the people. The violence is there, that's of the people. Let the people interpret that reality in their own way. I think that's where the difficulty comes between the positivists and other schools of thought. So there is an ongoing kind of debate between the positivists and the let's say interactionists or the interpretivist uh, kind of people and who are trying to emphasize more on qualitative kind of approach that if we are trying to find out or study the phenomenon then we look into the interpretations of the people that how they interpret that particular reality. If we are talking about violence let the researcher not develop its own criteria to consider a particular reality, whether it's violence or it's not violence. Let's talk about the people. Let's ask them, what is violence? Now, that is a social construction, and how people have constructed that uh, uh, concept of violence, to whom they consider uh, a situation, whether it's violent, violent or not violent. Now, this is, uh, uh, the researcher is nobody to give that kind of uh, situation. So subject matter of the natural sciences is different from the social sciences, therefore it becomes difficult. The social sciences subject matter is uh, such that perhaps it is not possible to uh, be studied by using the uh, approach being followed by the natural sciences and that was one of the criticism over there. It's difficult to apply the natural sciences model to the social sciences. So uh, interpretivists uh, uh, have an approach where they say that the explanations which is being given by the natural scientists uh, have to be reconsidered because uh, what they do is that they create the criteria on their own and then they apply it to, to the subjects. What they are trying to focus at is that uh, we should go to the people and look into their uh, own interpretations and then see what happens. So interpretations uh, have to be uh, a reality, a, a creation of the people, and uh, we should uh, try to understand their interpretation. It's more like... A, empathic kind of approach where we put ourselves in their position and then see how they see a particular reality rather than we impose on, on them. So that's a, a, a big difference between the positivists and the interpretivists. That they are trying to give explanation of the reality and interpretivists are trying to focus on the actual interpretation 
of the reality as uh, understood by the by the people so this is a uh, one is more explanation of the reality the other is more of understanding of the reality and people who are the focus of the study now we have to go to them and try to get their version of course their version their interpretation again has been let's say recorded uh, by the researcher and that researcher is further going to uh, interpret their interpretation it might be a double kind of interpretation one interpretation of the reality by the people where that that reality is then how the researcher understood that interpretation and then he is trying to give his own interpretation uh, let's say as an outcome of this uh, his findings or her findings interpretivists actually are focusing on three main features the first one is reality reality is uh, both social and physical and it has a meaning for the human beings and we are looking into the meanings uh, as created constructed by the people this is different from the natural scientists where they develop their own let's say yardstick a criteria or a scale or measure for the interpretation of uh, that reality now here i think uh, they are moving away so whatever the people have uh, uh, given a definition of a particular uh, let's say uh, concept we have to understand that concept from the viewpoint of the people rather than imposing that from the side of the researcher and that is what the natural scientists scientists have been doing or what the positivists have been doing when they were studying the human behavior the second one is the social scientist has to gain access to the people's common sense thinking and hence to interpret their actions and their social world from their viewpoint so that's uh, again repeating the reality uh, has been created by the people okay family might be a family it's composed of the human beings fine but how people interact how they interpret that in interaction the relations between husband and wife relations between let's say a uh, parents and the, their children uh the respect the emotions the passions the love that is to be interpreted from the angle of the uh people uh, the expression of for example their feelings uh, uh, sometimes these might not be observable but that doesn't mean that people don't have the feelings and people have developed their own way of uh, our approved way of expressing those feelings and uh, the interpretations of the natural sciences scientist or the or the positivists could be uh, different from the actual interpretations of the people the third one which uh, i think uh, i have already talked that the researcher goes to the field talks with the people has an empathetic kind of uh, approach to the people he tries to look into the interpretations of the people and then whatever uh, the data he has got with respect to the interpretations of the reality now the researcher is further going to uh, reinterpret the interpretations of the people and that's where i said this is more like a double interpretation now whether there comes a bias in between or whether that uh, understanding of the understanding of the people understanding of the researcher of the understanding of the people do they synchronize with each other i think that's a, a big question therefore can natural sciences approach be applied to the social sciences world i think this was the big uh, criticism on the part of the interpretivists and uh, that was part of the epistemology that can that be uh, considered as a uh, real knowledge uh, so that is uh, how Uh, the debate uh, continues but i would say that uh, the the two schools of thought can certainly uh, make use of uh, each other's uh, approach we may not be able to uh, say 
uh, good way to one approach and follow the other approach, the good things from one approach should be taken uh, care of. And uh, there could also be the possibility of using uh, mixed kind of uh, methods in the, is in the study of the human behavior or the human sciences. Then uh, we have talk about the ontological considerations. Ontological considerations are concerned with the nature of the social entities. We have questions like, can social entities be considered as objective entities? Can these social entities be realities external to the social actors? Who constructed these realities, actors or the researchers? I think these are the questions which uh, are, I think, under debate. Uh, certainly, uh, these are the two uh, maybe opposite kind of things, but uh, we are not talking about the opposite poles. There is likely to be some kind of uh, borrowing from each other's field, and then we try to move further. Objectivism, I think the one um, big concept which they talk about objectivism is uh, trying to dissociate the reality from the people who are creating that kind of reality. They're talking about the organization, they're talking about the rules and regulations in the organization, they talk about the bureaucracy in the organization, they talk about uh, the infrastructure in the organization. but uh, are all these things uh, so objective? I think these things are created by the people. That organization is there because the people are there. The, can these two be separated? Uh, probably it becomes difficult. The rules have been created by the people, uh, constructed by the people for the smooth functioning of the, of the uh, situation or smooth functioning of the reality. So that is how the two concepts come in, objectivism and constructivism. So research strategy, when we look at that, perhaps we have to combine the two, both quantitative as well as qualitative. So that's where we see that lots of things uh, come in. Um, when we are talking about the selection of the topic, uh, even that top, the selection of the topic is not perhaps value free. Uh, this, uh, as I said in the beginning, well, you are free to select your topic according to your interest. So interest could vary from one person to another person. And this is again based on the value judgment of the people. One might be giving more value to one kind of area of research. The other might be giving more value to another kind of area of research. And there you could also see that not only the selection of topic with respect to, uh, let's see, methodology, again, which methodology is to be valued uh, for that particular study, which is more appropriate. And when we are talking about appropriateness, inappropriateness, of course, we are talking about the logic as well. But at the same time, uh, in this, uh, the values of the researcher come in. So we are having, let's say, different methodologies. Now, how do we evaluate those uh, with respect to the suitability to a particular situation, keeping in view the topic of uh, the researcher? Uh, then, even within the research design, I think we talk about values with respect to the use of the instrument of data collection the values with respect to who goes to the field, the values with respect to uh, the use of uh, uh, one type of statistics or another kind of statistics. And then the whole process might have uh, some practical considerations in it. And these practical considerations actually have to be value-based. Uh, Value uh, in terms of desirability, and desirability could be uh, considered from various angles. Desirability could be with respect to the availability of the subjects, availability of the different techniques, and also with respect to uh, what we want to achieve. So I, I think the 
values, the research on the whole, I would say it may not be value free because uh, values uh, come in at every stage of the research, starting from the selection of the topic uh, to its uh, presentation to the selection of the research design. And within the research design, the different steps or different elements of the research design, all those are selected. And there, the selection, when I use the word selection, there might be a choice between one item and another item. And when we give, uh, let's say, preference to one uh, over the other, I think the values uh, come in. So therefore, the values uh, are there very much in this research. So in the whole, uh, I think, discussion today, what we have talked about is the selection of the topic. And the selection of the topic, as I said, starts from a person's individual interest. And then perhaps uh, the preferences with respect to the positivistic approach or the let's say, interpretivist kind of approach. And in the end, uh, we might come up with that kind of situation that uh, is not either or. Let's move on from this debate. And there we might move on to some kind of uh, approach where we borrow uh, some good things from one, one positivistic kind of approach and the others from the other one. And we might use uh, some mixed method kind of approach. I think that's all for today. Or next topic pe baat Thank you.